Thanks, sir. The like to you. Exam. Thank one. Thanks. If it were done when it is done, then to her well it were done quickly. If the assassination could trammel up the consequence and catch with his surcease uh, success, that but this blow might be the be-all and the end-all. Here, but here, upon this bank and shoal of time, we jump the life to come. But in these cases, we still have judgment here that we but teach bloody instructions which being taught return to play the inventor. This even-handed justice commends the ingredients of our poison chalice to our own lips. He's here in double trust, first as I'm his kinsman and his subject, strong both against the deed, then as his host who should against his murderer shut the door, not bear the knife myself. Besides, this Duncan hath borne his faculties so meek, have been so clear in his great office, that his virtues will plead like angels, trumpet-tongued against the deep damnation of his taking off and pity like a naked newborn babe striding the blast o'er heaven's carabin, horsed upon the sightless couriers of the air, shall blow the horrid deed in every eye. The tear shall drown the wind. I have no spur to prick the sides of my intent, but only vaulting ambition which all leaps itself and falls on the other. Oh no, what use? He has almost sucked. Why have you left the chamber? And he asked for me? Know you not, he has? We will proceed no further in this business. He hath honored me of late, and I have bought golden opinions from all sorts of people, which would be worn now and then you as glass not cast aside so soon. Was the hope drunk, wherein you dressed yourself? Have it slept since? And which see now to look so green and pale, and what he did so freely? This time, such I have come thy love. Art thou afeard to be the same in thine own act and valor as thou art in desire? Wouldst thou have that which thou esteemst the ornament of life, and live a coward in thine own esteem, letting I dare not wait upon thy word like the poor cat in the adage? Pretty peace, I dare do all that may become a man. Who oh, dares do more who is none? What beast was it then that made you break this enterprise to me? When you durst do it, then you were a man. And to be more than what you were, you would be so much more than a man. Nor time, nor place did then adhere, and yet you would make both. They have made themselves, and that their fitness does now unmake you. I have given suck, and I know how tender it is to love the babe that milks me. I would, while he was smiling in my face, have plucked my nipple from his boneless gums and dashed the brains out. Had I so sworn as you have done to this? Yet we should fail. We fail? But screw your courage to the sticking place and we'll not fail. When Duncan is asleep, where to the rather shall his day's hard journey soundly invite him, his two chamberlains will I with the wine and wassail so convinced that memory, the water of the brain, shall be a fume, and the receipt of reason a limbeck only. When swinish deep their drenched natures lie as in a death, what cannot you and I perform upon the unguarded Duncan? What not put upon his spongy officers who shall bear the guilt of our great quell? Bring forth men, children, only for thy undaunted metal should compose nothing but males. Will it not be received when we have marked with blood those sleepy two of his own chamber and use their very daggers that they have done it? Who dares receive it other, as we shall make our griefs and clamor roar upon his death? I am settled. And bend up each corporal agent to this terrible feat. Away, and not the time with fairest show. False face must hide what the false heart doth know. Go, bid thy mistress, when my drink is ready, she strike upon the bell. Get thee to bed. Is this a dagger which I see before me? The handle toward my hand? Come. Let me clutch thee. I have thee not, and yet I see thee still. Art thou not fatal vision, sensible to feeling as to sight? Or art thou but a dagger of the mind, a false creation, proceeding from the heat-oppressed brain? 
I see thee yet, in form as palpable as this which now I draw. Thou marshalest me the way that I was going, and such an instrument I was to use. Mine eyes are made the fools of the other senses, or else worth all the rest. I see thee still, and on thy blade and dungeon cuts of blood which was not so before. There's no such thing. It is the bloody business which informs us to mine eyes. Oh, all the one half world nature seems dead, and wicked dreams abuse the curtain sleep, which craft celebrates pale Hecate's offering, and withered murder alarum by his sentinel, the wolf whose howls his watch, thus with his stealthy pace, with dark winds ravishing strides, towards his design moves like a ghost. Thou sure and firm said earth, hear not my steps which way they walk, but fear the very stones prey to my whereabout, and take the present horror from the time which now suits with it. Whilst I threat he lives, words to the heat of deeds do cold breath gives. The bell. I go, and it is done, the bell invites me. Hear it not, Duncan, for it is an hell that summons thee to heaven, Oh, to hell. Go. A room in the castle. Enter Lady Macbeth. That which hath made them drunk hath made me bold. What hath quenched them hath given me fire. Hark. Peace. It was the owl that shrieked the fatal bellman which gives the status good night. Here's about it. The doors are open. And the surfeited grooms do mock their charge with snores and drug their possets. The death and nature do contend about them whether they live or die. Who's there? What ho? Oh, lad, I'm afraid they have awaked and tis not done. This tempter not that he can bounce us. Oh, God, lay their daggers ready. He could not miss him. Had he not resembled my father as he slept, I had done it. My husband. I have done the deed. Didst thou not hear a noise? I heard the owls scream and the crickets cry. Did you not speak? When? How? As I descended, I... Hark, who lies in the second chamber? Ptolemy. This is a sorry sight. A foolish thought to say, a sorry sight. As one did laugh in his sleep and one cried murder, that they did wake each other, I stood and heard them. They did say their prayers and addressed them again to sleep. But there are two lodged together. One cried, God bless us. And amen, the other. As they had seen me with these hangman's hands listening there, fear, I could not say, Amen, when they did say, God bless us. Consider it not so deeply. But wherefore could not I pronounce Amen? I had most need of blessing and Amen stuck in my throat. These deeds must not be thought of to these ways, so it will make us mad. Thought I hear a voice cry, sleep no more. Macbeth does murder sleep. The innocent sleep. Sleep that knits up the ravel sleeve of care. That each day's life saw labor's bath. Balm of hurt minds, great nature's second course, chief nourisher in life's feast. What do you mean? Still it cried, sleep no more. To all the house. Glums have murdered sleep, and therefore Cordor shall sleep no more, Macbeth shall sleep no more. Who was it that thus cried? Why were they saying? You do unbend your noble strength to think so brain sickly of things. Go, get some water, and wash this filthy witness from your hand. Why did you bring these daggers from the place? They must lie there. Go, carry them, and smear the sleepy grooms with the blood. I'll go no more. I'm afraid to think what I have done. Look on it again. I dare not. Infirm of purpose. Give me the daggers. Sleeping and the dead are but as pictures. Tis the eye of childhood that fears a painted devil. If he do bleed, and gild the faces of the grooms with all, for it must seem their guilt. 